Our speaker today, you have probably heard of. Uh, <laughs> he attended Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, where he received degrees in physics and computer science. His work has been featured in the New York Times, Forbes, and Reason Magazine, to name a few. He's been a guest on Part of the Problem with Dave Smith. He's been featured on TimCast with Tim Pool. He moved to New Hampshire for the Free State Project in 2015 and is a sitting board, uh, a sitting board member of the Free State Project. He is the founder and CEO of Library, a free state-based blockchain company that aims to bring decentralization and local control to the digital content creation space. And he's brought some of his scrappy startup energy to New Hampshire and helped it become an industry leader in the market for freedom. He's been called things from a troll to a tech guru online. Some people think he's an antagonist. Some people just think he's awesome. Um, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you my friend and the most unapologetic libertarian that I know, Jeremy Kaufman. Thank you. Thank you. I can't, I'm, I can't stand behind that. I have too much like ADD or nervous energy when I talk, so I'm going to walk around a little bit. Um, thank you so much for coming out uh, today. I'm here to talk about sort of the last year in New Hampshire, how the Free State Project has been doing. Uh, this is an annual tradition going back, I, I don't know how long, um, but I have the pleasure of giving this talk a, a second year in a row. And so let's talk about the state of the Free State Project in, in 2023. But I'm going to actually start with a video clip from 2004. Uh, this was one of the first times, as far as I know, it's actually the first time uh, that the Free State Project got um, major press uh, attention. I had actually never seen this, although it's been on our YouTube channel since 2009. I only saw this clip for the first time just a couple of weeks ago. Credit to Bob, uh, to Kurt, uh, who's in the audience. Um, and so I loved this clip, and so I had to clip this, and we'll just let's let's just play it. Uh, Lyndon Fowler of Dartmouth College thinks that the Free Staters may have met the enemy, and he is them. Uh, As a political scientist, I'm very skeptical about the political impact, um, and the reason for that is that. To, uh, to bring about political change, one has to be organized. People who uh, engage in that kind of radical individualism um, are not really likely to be very effective in collective enterprise. So I, 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 I got such a kick out of this, listening to a political scientist at Dartmouth make her predictions uh, about our movement. And remember, this time, right, there's no one here, or maybe there's a small handful of people here, there's no one in office. <laughs> hey, I've got some. See, I love, I love libertarians. I'll always correct you. Um, <laughs> I do appreciate. I like being corrected. I'm a libertarian. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, so 18 years later, um, uh, this is of course uh, how how they talk about us, uh, and I don't think it's entirely false. So they maybe exaggerate a little bit. Yeah, free staters have taken over the New Hampshire legislature. We control the state, guys. I don't know if you heard. <laughs> have you heard that? We do. That, I don't know. It's in the press. That, so. Um, and and uh, there's been a lot of this. There's been uh, there's been ones bigger than this, right? We've had, um, um, and in fact, I'm kind of defining this as uh, I I think this is kind of the year where, <laughs> for better or worse, guys, the Free State Project is is going mainstream. Um, people are gonna people have kind of heard about it. Um, uh, we had um, this documentary, of course, I think uh, come out that a lot of people uh, know quite different uh, than the press treatment that we got in 2004. Everyone should check this out. Uh, if you have people who um, are uh, curious about the movement, this is a great, uh, great video uh, to send them. And this is part of us uh, going mainstream. I'm going to show you another, actually. And there are a lot of articles, Boston Globe articles, we're in the New York Times, other things. But um, this is a Suffolk poll uh, that came out uh, prior uh, to the uh, – uh, to the last elective cycle. And it's actually not about the, the numbers, um, although they're not great. Um, but it is, it's about the fact that we were included. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, because what, what this is, right, this is an, a, a, an objective uh, organization that attempts to, to, to understand the politics of a state. Um, and they're saying that this is the level that we are at. Okay, this is everyone, by the way. This, th this list didn't continue past us. They polled on um, the, the candidates for president, the candidates for governor, the candidates for senate, and us. <laughs> okay? Um, now, it turns out a lot of people still haven't heard of us. 
Uh, and in terms of p- whether you like us or not, it, it's um, largely along partisan lines if you dig into the cross tabs. Um, so the, the top lines don't look that great, but it's basically every Democrat who's heard of the Free State Project hates us, is, is if you dig into the cross tabs, that's what it's actually the data actually says. Um, <laughs> But it's not about that. It's about the fact that we're getting included. That's I want to be clear. That's the point. Um, and so this is something in terms of our movement and where we are going. Um, it used to be that people hadn't heard of us. And I don't think that's going to be true uh, anymore. It's going to be less and less true moving forward. And that means we're entering you know kind of a different phase of what we're doing here a little bit. And so that's that's kind of one of the themes of uh, probably the major theme of this of this talk. Um, but I know a lot of people like this talk. The, uh, the they like to hear the numbers. Later, I'm going to discourage you from liking numbers, but we'll start by giving you what you want. Um, uh, and uh, last year, I did a guessing game with this, so we'll try it again. Um, and so I'm just going to show a number, and we'll see if people can guess what this number is. 608. That's uh, so the number of new free staters this year. Um, it's down. This year. Sorry, sorry, 2022. 2022, sorry. Uh, that's the number. Yeah, so it's down uh, from 2021. That's not that surprising, uh, actually, because COVID churned a lot of people and not quite as many people were uh, you know were churning in uh, in the last year and actually there's a I've just take hey, full disclosure there's a number of metrics that are probably down around 20 30 percent from um, from the year before now remember the year four was a record the best year number numerically that we ever had and this is better than almost every other year okay so this is not I don't think that, that we should be discouraged by this number I think this is great but obviously we shouldn't be satisfied um, I also think we continue to have a huge um, uh, legibility problem in terms of even sort of tracking this like I'm I'm almost certain there's someone in this room who lives in New Hampshire who is a free stater who is not on our list of free state like I, and it probably applies to multiple people in this room um, so it does help <laughs> well and that's a beep that's the people that know there's a whole nother group of people they're like of course I'm on the list I'm like no you're not uh, <laughs> so but anyway look that's the number people want to know so that's the number. Um, this is, uh, th- I love all the, the moving photos. It's great to see um, uh, Kurt Robert, uh, Kurt's hair change uh, throughout the year. So I get to see uh, in him in every photo. But I think this was the most exciting one. I don't know the full story on this, but I gathered that, that um, we needed to use a tractor to unload. Uh, it was a very big box. And that's actually a state rep driving the tractor. Uh, that's the, I believe that's Travis Corcoran driving the tractor. And, uh, and uh, yeah, helping, helping unload. Uh, helping unload a box, we need to get the tractor out. So uh, that was the best moving photo I could find. Um, all right, 99. Hmm? <laughs> state reps, state reps. So 99, there's 99. Uh, I, you know, kind of to the extent that we can count state reps, um, I just trust uh, what the NHLA says. So if they're endorsing them, I assume they're. Th- I like to say that they must be at least as libertarian as Gary Johnson, but I don't know if <laughs> that's not the NHLA speaking. So uh, we had 97 state reps. Two state senators, one of those state senators um, moved uh, from Maryland to New Hampshire over a decade ago, okay? Uh, and he's now, he's now elected in the Senate, uh, and which is the first, uh, I believe, the first time uh, that that's happened. For, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this was very good, and this was after, um, you know, the, the whole idea of us going mainstream, the Democrats did run ag- against us. Uh, I mean, they felt that attacking uh, people as free staters was like one of the best things that they could do to try to win elections. So they did try it, and it, it didn't appear to work very well. Um, this, uh, all right, so I got a next, uh, next number. <laughs> all right, yeah, so uh, I should probably have asked you. Um, and honestly, I'm going to start taking this out. I don't expect it to ever not sell out again. So it's going to get boring just to tell people every year the pork fist sold. It was exciting last year. Everyone's like, yeah, we know. So, but this was, this was great. Uh, pork, I mean, what pork fist has become, and I'll use this just to talk about the events generally a little bit because the events have continued, um, I think, to get better. Pork fist is, uh, in my view, the best it's ever, uh, ever been, and it's only getting uh, bigger and better. And this is what it's about. We've added the bus tours. It's about um, getting people here. Uh, getting people to come and check out the state. Pork Fist is the most successful event for doing that, um, but just doing that generally. Actually, I'm jumping ahead, um, but yeah. So this was uh, this was Pork Fest. All right, I've got another number. That's right. <laughs> I calculated. Jason was low. Uh, <laughs> uh, so now this is uh, this is social media impressions or uh, social media impressions across Facebook and Twitter. Again, this is down uh, a little bit from uh, from last year, uh, but still higher than it's been uh, in the past. And 
this was our best performing post from last year, so I just figured I'd share. <laughs> that it's so random, by the way, when you post these, you don't really have any, like I would not have guessed that this was gonna be our best performing post, <laughs> but you know, you, that's, you learn. So, uh, and uh, it's got like, so, but <laughs> so yeah, this got like, uh, I think the impressions on this was like 500,000 or something like that. So um, it's good, it's helpful, you know, uh, and something I see a lot of actually helping with the social media is that uh, you know a lot of the posts that do the best uh, aren't the mo aren't the most serious ones. Um, we of course want to make put the serious stuff in the mix for because the people who care about the serious stuff are, are kind of the most valuable. But having the uh, having the memes and doing the other stuff helps keep your uh, brand strong. Helps you you know continue to get attention. So so you got to be doing both. And numerically, this was uh, you know that was the best one. All right. So uh, I got f I've got 53% as the, as the, <laughs> yeah, that is, that is what, <laughs> that is the number, that is the number. Uh, so I'm not really claiming this is, I, I don't, I'm not like claiming this is a free state project victory, but the reason it relates to the numbers is this, um, the Croydon story, for people who don't know, uh, um, was that brought us the most attention uh, in the last five years, uh, second only to the secession uh, bill last year. Uh, so this is the secession, uh, the attention that we got around secession was the most attention the Free State Project got in, hi in history that I have available. Uh, and the second biggest one uh, was the Croydon story uh, because it was getting covered by NPR and the New York Times, the National Press, and, and this kind of thing. I would like to guess, actually, that the secession people are probably more favorable to ideas than the people who are finding us because of the Croydon thing. But, you know, look, libertarians are still reading the New York Times. And if you're a libertarian reading the New York Times, you know exactly what it's doing. Okay, and so when you read, when you, you can read through the lines and you read the way they're writing around Croydon, and it, that's still getting the message through to the libertarians who are reading the New York Times. Um, so I think, you know, um, I, I am, I <laughs> sometimes there's a trade-off between national attention and what we're trying to do in state. I take the view that the Free State Project's job is to be optimizing towards out-of-state, towards getting people here. And so, look, this is stuff that's getting us attention. It's almost certainly um, resulting in some number of people who end up here, and this was the first time that they hear about it. And so in terms of last year, this was the biggest story of last year. This was the thing that, that got the most attention for the, for the, free, state, for the free State Movement. Okay, all right, and now I've got uh, 80. Who did the bingo? <laughs> this number was dis this number is disappointing to me. <laughs> yeah, come on guys. All right, so uh, look, the Free State Project is still running off of a, a pretty meager budget. That's because we mostly just promote things that other people are doing. We don't do that much. But it would be um, having more money would be nice. <laughs> and if you want more people here, uh, becoming a monthly donor is the number one thing that we ask people to do. Whether it's uh, five dollars a month, or if you can afford, you know, much more than that, that's also great. Um, uh, but giving monthly, uh, it really helps uh, the project, and you can also get into a private chat uh, with other monthly with other monthly donors. And uh, we remain very child friendly. You know, we're very <laughs> in favor of just letting <laughs> children come and hang out. All right. So yes, you please become a monthly donor at fsp.org/give. I would we we would really appreciate it. Um, we're the people getting more people here. We're the top of the funnel, uh, and we don't have very much money, and if you give us money, we turn money into people very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll talk a little bit about some of the policy victories uh, from this year. So how did the state get more free on a sort of policy basis? Um, so there's a, a couple of areas. Uh, I think the biggest one uh, was there's a whole bunch of medical freedom uh, stuff that, that happened in uh, 2022 that, that got signed uh, by the governor. The biggest one being that the state, uh, I think the biggest one is the state is barred from being involved in any kind of vaccine mandate scheme. We did it the libertarian way, respecting private property. We just, uh, we, you know, so we, we just been the same. We did it legislatively. We didn't do it through some executive order. So this is solid. There's a whole bunch of other ones behind this. Um, everything related to um, medical disclosures around children in school, immunization around children in school, um, uh, churches being essential. I believe that was also last year. So there's a whole list of things in this category. I'm not going to turn this into the talk where I, I do all the policy stuff, but so this was this was a huge area. Um, fire, federal firearms nullification. I can tell you this one is really really popular. Uh, this is an issue that that people get really excited when they see this doing uh, when they see us doing this here. They say my st my state isn't doing that. You know my state can't do that. Uh, and so this is something uh, that, that happened here in New Hampshire. Um, it, it's shocking to me how uh, uh, unpopular at times are posts like uh, that when we talk about cutting taxes. Because um, to me, it's one of the most important things, right? People get really excited that we're going to like legalize ivermectin 
Um, but the truth is, a, a you know, a 0.1% cut to the business profits tax is you know, 10 to $20 million back in the pockets of New Hampshire residents. It's a really big deal. It might sound like only 0.1%, but it's the largest tax in the state, and it, it's continuing to go down. And one of the things that, that the Liberty people here have been very, very effective in doing is I call it the Liberty ratchet. It's, uh, you know, it's the ratchet effect. Normally, right, budgets only go up, and we've got a kind of inverse ratchet. And so even if we're only getting it down a little bit, Right. We never let it go. We never let the government get bigger. And then we take every opportunity to cut one one thousandth of it, one ten thousandth of it. OK. D right. Uh, and so we just as long as we keep doing that. Uh, and I think this is a great example. So, you know, this one isn't at the top of a lot of people's lists, um, but Republicans in, in uh, the state house cut taxes again in 2022. They cut taxes uh, you know, two years running. So great. Um, <laughs> we legalize child labor. I mean, so you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's got to get clipped. Uh, <laughs> so I love this one uh, particularly because uh, I'm part of the Libertarian Party in New Hampshire, and we actually got in, in trouble with, with Gary Johnson publicly criticizing us uh, for supporting child labor, and the New Hampshire Republicans are like, no, we'll just, we'll just do it. Like, you know, we'll <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I love this because the, the fact that the people here, are, quite frankly, like this doesn't have great optics, and Republicans are like, we'll just do it anyway. I mean, and, and I think that's so <laughs> – I think I, – look. It's really important. You have to be willing to do these things. We like things that people can spin in a bad way. So it's like, no, no, we just uh, now look. It's not uh, fully deregulated. I, 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 I ask. We have more work to do. But they, they made the, uh, they made the situation better. Um, so, uh, and then this was another under the radar one when I was going through 2022. I don't hear people talk about this one, but this is a big deal. This was again we made a uh, we limited asset forfeiture in 20 uh, in 2022. Although there's honestly about 10 that could be at this tier, and I don't want to turn this into a talk where I just recite victory after victory. Uh, but this was another one that, that uh, people aren't aware of. Uh, and by the way, also, if you just like uh, Google New Hampshire against the Tenth Amendment Center website, I learned that they write an article about us like every two weeks, and I've missed I missed like half of them. So they're just uh, we you know uh, we're just doing stuff constantly uh, that they're talking about on the Tenth Amendment Center. So, all right. Uh, and you guys know, I people uh, again. The numbers say this content is popular, so it's not just about me liking it. All right, I'm an empiricist. I follow the data. All right, and people like the progressive tiers. They really like the style of content. And so I'm just going to give you my uh, a couple of gems, a couple of gems from the year uh, while we're while we're all here together. Okay. Um, so uh, should, I, should I, I guess I should should I read these or just um, so it's already happening here in New Hampshire. Free sitters are on school boards, local and state government everywhere. Please don't be passive about this. We need to prevent these people from gaining any more power. <laughs> oh my God, I know it's like and you know we know we're like, we're like oh, how true is that? But who can't just lean into it? Just <laughs> lean into it. Just lean into it. All right. Uh, New Hampshire politics needs help. A lot of out-of-state fascists, and local ones too, have moved in under the Free State Project. They're taking over every local position of power in government and actively making worse things for everyone in their community. It's getting scary. Um, <laughs> look, and if you click into these people's profile, it's just like complete blue and on, you know, the equivalent of lefty uh, conspiracists, but uh, it's, it's fun nonetheless. Um, all right, this is, I really like this one. <laughs> we gotta be using this as a reaction meme more uh, and more. <laughs> Okay, this is great. You just post this image. Okay, Google Free Staters. Who is John Galt? Okay, Google Free Staters. All right. <laughs> she was out there by herself. I, she's not on our side, guys. I, <laughs> uh, so, all right, um, I've got this guy. This is like a, uh, I believe he's a professor or maybe he's a journalist. I forget. Uh, but this guy is, um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's basically the radical right founder, Jason Sorens, who wants to dismantle New Hampshire, is meeting with the governor. The governor, he's a, the governor is a secret free stater. <laughs> he's not, he's not. <laughs> but again, they'll repeat it. I, they'll clip it, they'll leave out the fact that I said he's not. They'll just repeat it. So it's helpful. Um, I... Uh, um, so, uh, I, but it's, it is good. Look, uh, look, I'll be honest. I actually think Sununu doesn't love us, but so the real reason this is an endorsement is that he feels he has to do it. <laughs> uh, and that's a sign of progress. Um, so, um, and, uh, and I'll, I'll end with this one. This one is not so much about the text, um, although the text is decent, but it's that Rachel Maddow is signal boosting articles about a libertarian takeover of, of New Hampshire, right? And that she is advertising that 
to her audience, right? There's always two questions to be asking about, about the media, right? It's one, does this make libertarians like the state more? And then two, does it make people who aren't libertarians like the state less, right? Um, because that's what we want. We have to continue, we want to be continuing to increase the people who are closer to our values, and we want to be at the same time discouraging people who are away from them. And so like, that's why you know, when these, whether it's you know, the, the Boston documentary, it's you know, the way that the Boston press talks about us, they're saying people of Boston, good people of Boston, right-thinking progressives of Boston, New Hampshire is terrible. Okay, great, so they won't come. <laughs> like, thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so um, I, I, I don't know if people know this, actually, because it's not something I've, I've talked about a lot. Um, I, I was technically speaking the executive director for around 18 months or, or so of the Free State Project. That was not authority I used uh, very often. I tried to mainly uh, let people, you know, kind of, kind of do their thing, uh, but I was technically the intro, the executive director. I am no longer uh, the uh, executive director just because I've got uh, kind of too much, too much going on in my, you know, my personal life, and my head's just, just not there to be, to be focusing on this to the same degree. So I'm just letting people know. Uh, if people who haven't heard, I'm not, I will not be having that title anymore. Uh, I am going to still be helping with comms and social media. I'm still going to be out there promoting stuff, but I don't want to have a have a title and not be, you know, fulfilling the role, and I'm not confident that I am going to be able to do that, so that's something that I am, uh, I'm stepping down from that happened a couple of weeks ago. I think a lot of people didn't even know I technically had it in the first place, so it's probably not, uh, probably not big news, but I'm letting everyone know that that, that, that change has happened. Um, but since I have been uh, paying attention for a while, um, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about some of the um, lessons or ways that I've come to think about uh, our movement and what we're doing. Um, and so I have, I don't remember how many, maybe it's five again, um, some lessons. And um, so the first one, it's very much related to the theme of this, it, but I, it's a way of thinking that I want to be in encouraging. So maybe even lessons isn't the right title for these sub things. But um, I really want to encourage us that like, if we don't go out there and define ourselves, we are going to be defined by other people, okay? And it will be easier to compete for that definition when the slate is blank. It's much harder to come back. People don't want to change their minds, you know? Like once you start buying, you know, just peanut butter, it's the best peanut butter, and you don't get them to consider Skippy, right? That's to our benefit when we're running as Republicans. <laughs> um, but like this is, there's now this blank slate for a lot of people of, of what is the Free State Project. And so we've got to be out there. We've got to be, there's no, there, there is no, um, holding back, I think, at this point. You've got to, I'm not saying you have to, like, get a tattoo or talk about it all the time or become the weird, like, CrossFitter vegan person who has to talk about you being a free stater all the time. But, like, you can't, you have to, like, you have to, if at your job, I encourage you to let it be known uh, in, if you're in, com you know, community roles. And it, you don't even have to, again, you don't have to shout about it. It could be carrying around the water bottle or making sure there's a porcupine symbol on your car. Um, it could be doing, you know, sponsoring the local baseball team. Just do that yourself and, you know, Free staters, uh, you know, like like uh, sports, you know, whatever. Uh, that <laughs> obviously these ideas aren't hashed out, and I'm coming up with them on the fly. Okay, C you'll you'll think of better things. But the point, what I'm really encouraging you to do is to is like, if we don't, if we don't do this, other people will do it for us, and we won't like it as much. <laughs> um, and so that is where we are. It's a different place than we were ten years ago. Um, but this is where we are today, and so I'm, I'm just encouraging this way of, of, of thinking about things. Um, all right, I have um, spent a lot of time thinking about and uh, talking to people, how did they end up here, listening to what they say, and then also doing that thing where, you know, trying to, um, you know, delve into their psychology and understand why, why people make the choices that they do. And the, the, what I've seen more than anything else is that to get people to move here, you, you, you have to get them to visit. There are some people who move without visiting, full credit to them, it's not something that many people do, and there are a ton of people who never thought they would move that decided to after they visited, okay? And so, to some extent, you know, saying to people, to saying some, some libertarian, oh, you should move to New Hampshire, is like, you know, it, it's, it's like uh, you know, asking to marry someone on the first date, you know, kind of, or, or, or something like this. Or, or something worse. Um, uh, so, uh, the, uh, uh, so um, but this is so so like rather yeah, and and all of your psychology ends up being against making a big life choice of you know, um, whereas everyone likes a vacation. That's an easy thing to justify, right? 
Uh, that's like deserving a bowl of ice cream after a hard day. You know, uh, every aspect of your psychology wants to justify doing it, right? Whereas reorganizing your life to, to, to square your life with your ethical principles, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> I have to change so much. So, but you get people to visit, they meet people, they start to establish the connections. Um, and so this is, this is how I want us um, uh, to be, this is uh, my, my view, this is the thing to push. With people who aren't here, it's not you should move. Uh, I mean, maybe with your close friends or something, but it's really, oh, have you been? Have, you, know, you really should check it out. Um, you should really experience it for yourself and to encourage that, and it's the most persuasive thing. Like don't, you know, people, you're going the, the hyper online going through all the data you know kind of thing that a lot of people do i mean i think it's helpful but like it's actually not as persuasive as just spending a couple of days here and like meeting people and having the conversations i think and and so that is where i really think our attitude should be and by the way oh also that we have to do this i should have started with that we are not done okay i think we're going to end up with more than 20,000 libertarians here i think 20,000 is low right um i it, it wouldn't surprise me if we're actually over 10,000 in reality already but we have to when you, when someone comes here, like you, if when you help someone else get here, you've doubled your impact for the next, you know, decade, two decades, longer. Maybe they're in good health, uh, <laughs> you know. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but like, really, that is um, that's so important, and the way to do it is to get people to visit. One idea I've been playing with uh, uh, is that you know, basically every libertarian needs to visit New Hampshire at least once. Right, that it's a kind of um, uh, since, since you know, I've moved. I used to say we were building libertarian Israel, and that was really unpopular. So now, <laughs> to bring people back, I'm giving you the the, the uh, um, equally acceptable analogy of a libertarian hajj. So yeah, um, all right. Um, so I've seen a lot about uh, uh, how um, people within the Free State Project work uh, and do things, uh, and um, uh, the truth is, libertarians are different. A little bit, um, at least. And so I think um, you know, to have a successful movement, there are some things in terms of how both the Free State Project operates as well as how we kind of interact with each other, right? Like I don't even, I, I put management in quotes because I don't really see myself as managing volunteers. What I'm trying to do is, you know, rec like I, I am a facilitator. There is this set of things that, that need to be done, and I help, you know, kind of split it up and think about, you know, who could be helpful where. But, like, I'm trying to find people, and the Free State Project is trying to find people who are better, you know, whoever is doing video better be better at video than me. Whoever is doing, uh, I do Twitter because I think I'm the best at it. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're going to do, uh, but whoever is doing it, whoever is recording the video, but we want the best person to record video, right? And we get, we say, all right, you're going to be recording video. Get the hell out of the way. I say, I trust you to do the right thing. Uh, and you make sure that they're appreciated. So thank you, video guys. Okay, um, um, and and to to so many others. Um, I mean, I'm not going to start doing the name reciting thing because I don't. There's just, there's so many uh, uh, people, and we try to do that in more sort of you know individual posts and inside of the community and in the groups and so on. But it is it's uh, it's I'm privileged to get to get up here and talk about the stuff that other people do. Uh, but there's so many people who are doing. Um, you know, who are doing the work, whether that's inside of the Free State Project explicitly or as most people do it outside of it. Um, but uh, that, that is what it's all about. Uh, and that, you know, as long as we're continuing to support each other uh, and trust each other and appreciate each other, uh, that those are the kinds of things uh, that will continue to bring success for us. And inside of the Free State Project specifically, because we are this all-volunteer organization and we have these kinds of libertarian ethos, we have to kind of manage ourselves a certain way uh, you know, where the whole thing uh, isn't, you know, isn't going to work. Um, all right, this is a kind of pet topic of mine, but I think it applies a lot to our movement uh, because libertarians tend to really like numbers. They like to be able to measure things. So it says, uh, I'm combining two things. So it's a Goodhart's Law and a concept of legibility. So Goodhart's Law is uh, once a metric becomes a measure, it ceases to be a good metric, okay? <laughs> so this is the idea of, like, if we said all we care about is getting people to move here, that's actually not necessarily what you would want to do. Because how can you compare, say, um, you know, someone who comes and gets elected as a state senator uh, you know, to someone who you know, wants to be a, a, you know, a, a dropout and you know, doesn't want to you know, participate in things? They're both one in your, on your mover list, right? So if you said, all I care about is numbers, right? You know, um, you know, and, and so this applies to almost everything. You can use the metric so long as, but once you start gaming the metric, it all, once you say, oh, I just care about increasing the metric, it, it's almost certainly a mistake, okay? And so I think it's, and, what, and this is how it relates to this concept of legibility. 
So the concept of legibility is, can something be read? Can it be understood from the outside, right? So on the left, we have illegible nature uh, versus the scientific forest, right? And what we are trying to build is much closer to nature, right? Um, we are trying, there's, it's, uh, Russ Roberts, uh, an, a, another eco economist, has this thing about you know, how do you, um, there's no recipe for a prairie. It's, it's an organic, emergent kind of thing. And you can state properties that it has, but you, there's not a clear recipe or set of steps for, for recreating it. It's an organic thing. It's not, it's as much qualitative as it is quantitative. And so we should do the quantitative part and we should track the numbers, but we also have to, we shouldn't mistake the numbers for the thing, okay? Um, and, and that's <laughs> so so this is just a way of thinking in terms of like we shouldn't obsess and this is also another related concept here I think um, and then I'm gonna I know I just said that you should give money so I'm gonna I'm, I hate that I'm about to say this but I actually think like the 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 money is secondary to the effort money is legible right but f if we had five hundred thousand dollars in the bank account I couldn't buy the NBC documentary Right, I couldn't buy it. It's not. It's not something that that you buy. It's it's something that happens organically. But that that's kind of what I'm trying to get at with this. I've, this is probably the least sensible slide uh, of anything. There are people who are picking up what I'm I'm putting down. I appreciate it. And if you don't, we're just gonna move on. All right. So that's my that's my attempt to explain that idea. This is you know. It's also at the edge of my own understanding. You know. And when you're speaking about things at the edge of your own understanding, it's hard to uh, speak clearly. Uh, so, all right, uh, this one I can speak clearly about. Uh, this is not at the edge of my own understanding. This one I feel very strongly about. I hope that I've moved the movement in this uh, direction, and I hope that uh, people will continue to do this. We absolutely have to be a movement that rewards external victories and not internal drama, okay? Um, there's, uh, I'm a big fan of this guy, Rene Girard, and Girard says, uh, the victims that are most interesting to us are always those that allow us to condemn our neighbors. Uh, and our neighbors do the same, okay? The, because why? Because you're, what's actually happening here is jockeying for in-group position. It's jockeying for what's my status. And you can do that in a negative way by pushing the other guy down, or you can do it a positive way by, by going out and accomplishing things you know, for the group, for, for our movement. And we have to make sure that we, re that we reward the people who do, who do the external stuff, and we have to shut down any uh, the, the kinds of people who are going to do, and I'm not saying you can't be critical. I'm not saying that. Obviously, we're solving tough problems. We need to be critical of one another. First, we criticize privately. All right, if that doesn't work out, then we do the debate. We keep it. We do other things, right? The going, like going to the press to fight some in internal movement battle, has to be something that is absolutely not okay. Okay. And so it has to be that, that you, we cannot reward uh, that, that kind of thing. And so we have to have a movement that says we're going to reward people who go and, and do it externally, who fight the fight, and not people who want to, you know, move, other, move people up and down uh, inside each other. All right. Um, <coughs> so I, I would like to thank you guys. Thank you um, because it, so much is happening here from the people in this very room. Uh, and it's you people who are doing the work, uh, who are getting it done. Uh, and so uh, I'm, I'm about to wrap it up here and go to Q&A, but I wanted to say thank you very much uh, to the people, uh, both the people in this room, people listening to the talk, uh, people in New Hampshire who will never hear this. I'm saying thank you to anyway. It is hundreds and on hundreds of people who are making this uh, possible, what we're doing here. And it's people who are doing it. Um, they're not getting paid to do it, you know. Uh, so I guess libertarians do believe in charity. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so, um, uh, yeah, what, so what, what I would like to say uh, thank you to each and every person who's putting in that effort and putting in that time. Uh, to make New Hampshire a freer place. So thank you. Give yourself a round of applause. Clap for yourselves. <laughs> All right. So I, I continue to feel that you know, as the world is getting wor governmentally, not technologically, the world is getting worse. And I feel like New Hampshire continues to get better. I think that, that is all going to continue to accelerate, and I think it's going to lead us to liberty in our lifetime. All right? We are going to do it. All right? All right. All right, that's it. That's the talk. So uh, people have, have questions um, about the, the Free State Project or other things, we'll, we'll switch to Q&A. This question's for you, Jeremy. What do you like most about the number six million? 
that uh, well, I would like it to be higher. I'd like to be have higher than six million libertarians in uh, in New Hampshire. I would like to set a you know, I'd still like to set a record. You know, <laughs> yeah, it seems kind of low. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, that's gonna, a good answer. No. Thank you. Who is the executive director? Uh, there's there's not uh, one. Uh, it's not <laughs> look I, the. It's not. I actually think again. I was not. Um, I was not actually managing very much. It was just basically at give person X an explicit role and responsibility and and money if they needed it to do their thing. And so all of that's going to change. Still happen that way. I suppose technically the board may end up vote like basically. I had that authority vested in me by the board to do those to make those kinds of decisions. Um, I, I think that those things will now just be done by the, the board, or maybe they'll vest the board will vest it in Carla or someone else. Um, we are open to hiring another um, executive director, uh, and so that may be something that we try to do, although we'd really want someone to be I – I personally – I'm not speaking for the board or the organization. I personally uh, do not believe that the job can be done by someone who is not a free stater, who is not here. Like I'm not I, – I don't think uh, what we're trying to do is the kind of thing where you, know, you could hire someone with experience. Like It's got to be someone – in our movement because a lot of what this it relates to the volunteer management thing like a lot of this is just doing your best to kind of keep people playing nice you know <laughs> like that's literally it like if that's a lot of what i would do, and i'm going to still do that i you know try to keep like hey can we just like play together a little bit more you know, don't attack each other let's work together let's you know let's uh, support each other you know a lot of it's that it's managing kind of personalities and trying to and so i, I think if you're not you know kind of a a part of the movement if you don't know the people i think it's going to be a very hard job to do and do you want to tell us who's on the board? Uh, I we there are uh, two new board member, one new board member. <laughs> There's one new board member. <laughs> uh, so I guess what well, should we do? The new member? Yeah. All right. No, so the five existing members. All right, five existing members are Carly Garrick. Um, my. Oh. Oh. Uh, um, myself. Uh, <laughs> 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 Am I supposed to go last? Uh, 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 Greg Moore, from uh, Seamus, Seamus Casey, and Carol Ann Fenton. And our newest board member just voted in uh, this last month is Mark Warden. Uh, and there are rumors we will be adding another board member in the future. But, uh, yeah, so... Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's the current board. But I think, like, really, it's honestly, and I think the board would agree, it's the staff, it's the volunteers, like the person, like your know, Dennis runs Pork Fest. He does way more than every board member, <laughs> you know. Like, it's uh, you know, uh, Rebecca Kin is is working uh, uh, um, full time for the Free State Project, uh, as is um, um, as is Chris Lopez essentially, and uh, so we have those two people working for the organization. But then it's there's this whole suite of yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a whole suite of people. This has been one of the things that I was big on with the volunteer management side is like just tapping and appointing people. I mean, so we have an explicit person, you know, that's in charge of every social platform. We've got a social chat with, you know, 12 people in it who are, you know, batting around ideas and we take the best content from one another and, you know, that, that kind of thing. And then, you know, there's the same similar group for the tech team. I don't think it's quite as big, but it's like five or six people and, you know, they're in a chat. And so this, and they, and they all have their, you know, one person owns Liberty Forum, one person owns the, the schedule. And you know, so this is what, how I've been trying to, to move the organization is like to find people, hey, they can own this. You know, you know, Justin O'Donnell took over the YouTube channel. Justin O'Donnell started doing the live show. And also that's something, by the way, that thing about like we saying, like that was Justin who's like, I would like to do a live show, a Free State Project live show. Like, okay, great. <laughs> you know, and that's going to be our attitude. Like that is. <laughs> so I want that to be our attitude. Like saying we're not trying to own merch, right? Like. Like uh, Patrick, and I think actually Justin also has a, a merch store, but like, you know, Patrick picked up with the Granite Republic and he's doing a better job than we would, do, you know. And so it's like, it's if someone is, is demonstrating a, an inclination to like own an area, let them own the area, let them do a good job with it and like support them, but, uh, you know, and keep them connected to relevant people, but otherwise get out of the way. Like, you could talk to any of these people, like, the amount of times I'm ever like, you know, cor correct it. you know it's just not something i'm you know i'm just kind of like letting people be um or occasionally you know sharing sharing feedback or something like that from other people um but i'm not trying to 
for the most part, I'm not trying, you know, I'm not telling them what to do. I'm not even trying to. Uh, I'm, I'm trusting them. And, and that's how I think if we want the Free State Project to, as an organization, to keep being successful, we definitely have to keep doing that and working that way. Mickey as well. I heard Mickey is like a decent volunteer. Is that? Uh, <laughs> I don't do anything. <laughs> Thank you. I don't deserve that. Yes, but uh, so w what I would like to hear you articulate is how would you characterize the Free State Project's mission? We had an initial mission, and we kind of we, we shifted that. What do you think keeps us focused and motivated towards a goal? What is that goal? Well, the goal, the free. So the I try to speak very carefully about the Free State Project versus the Free State Movement. I use those terms. I'm careful about how I use them. Um, and so the Free State project exists to get libertarians here like that's largely it uh, or that's um, I mean beyond that we have a little bit of a duty I think once people get here to like get that you know it's not like oh you're here we're done you know like so we do want to continue to be a resource for people after here the sort of like if, if to, to use like sales terminology uh, it's what the yeah, customer success or like, you know, sort of like this server, you know, so, so okay, you've bought the product, like, let's make sure that you're using it correctly, you know, and getting the most out of it. Um, you know, so we, I think, we, and that's, uh, that's part of actually what Rebecca's job uh, has been, like, right, because if someone comes here and they don't get activated, they don't join an organization, they don't do the other stuff, and so, like, we, we, do, we do see that as part of our mission now, I guess, which is maybe a bit different, but I, it's, otherwise, it's get libertarians here. That's it, full stop. I see no reason to ever stop that. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it, it, I guess if we're like, we're there, there, we have enough of them, then maybe we would stop. But like, that seems like such like, I, you know, so to me, um, I, I see it as something that will continue to go on. I, I think there's no number at which I would feel like, oh, we're supposed to be done. It's like as long as there's still libertarians out there. I mean, I guess if if what uh, other states or other countries started to become libertarian, I mean, it would have to be some like pretty, pretty distant stuff. Otherwise, it's keep getting libertarians here. Keep getting libertarians here. Once they're here, try to get them activated in some way, and that and that's it. Uh, everything else happens under some other, you know, umbrella or organization. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, we, we keep on talking about libertarians as as though they're a monolith, right? And and we are such a a, 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 a diverse group of people here. And we've actually broken, you know, we have so many thousands of people, we've actually broken into, into little groups. Uh, but there's always the, the feeling, well, well, they're not libertarian, they're not libertarian. Can you talk a little bit about how we can kind of coexist as these various different groups, sometimes interacting, sometimes refusing to interact, but you know, actually all with, with this basic, uh, 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 basic ethic? Sure, yeah. So. Uh one of the things that relates to that that most is is the idea that I was talking about about the end is we have this inclination to criticize our neighbor, and but the, actually what's driving that motivation is like we're much more sensitive to kind of intragroup status than like you know going to to, to fight the, peop the fight the the person that we don't see that we don't interact with and it, I, to me the biggest thing that helps is like literally just being self aware of that right and like once you become self aware of it you can kind of detect it and diffuse it and and you know and if there are enough people in the chats and in the groups that hold this point of view we can say like yeah okay look yeah that that guy is uh yeah man his uh his social views sure are liberal but let's remember that you know we're still trying to accomplish the same thing or vice versa again man that guy sure is a uh, uh, his views sure are awfully socially conservative, you know, but like, okay, but we agree on property rights and voluntary interaction and it's a big enough state to have, you know, socially conservative spaces and socially progressive spaces, right? That's the whole point. Porkfest is a great time to practice that, in my opinion, <laughs> um, right? So if we can't get this right at a smaller scale, you know, if we can't get this right amongst ourselves, how can we expect to be getting it right with, um, you know, with other people? So, um, but I, I, to me, I, you know, I don't have a great answer to this because it is human nature to have this is why right the most um the most where's the most hatred it's always in the ethnic conflict where people want to fight their neighbor right if people don't generally it's very difficult to gin up hatred for people halfway around the world you know that kind of it's it's harder you know there has to be something there and so I, I that's what i think is the biggest thing is to develop that awareness and and to step and then, and then if you can detect it you can say look that person's five percent apart from us so that person's ten percent apart from us why are you so agitated at that person right we have we have people who are way way worse than that person <laughs> you know even if you don't like them uh you know and it, i mean so that's that's kind of what i am try to do that's and this, that's like my personal tactic yeah is to try to be aware of that and to try to recognize that what's actually motivating that behavior is intergroup conflict and and to say hey let's focus on you know 
the, the real enemy, not each other. Any other uh, questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for going to Liberty Forum. Give it up for the volunteers, for the whole Liberty Forum volunteer team. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it going for Jeremy, everybody. Thank you, Jeremy. Keep it going. Keep it going. You might as well.